Being brutally honest, yeah. I think football's homophobic. I completely understand any player that wouldn't want to come out whilst playing football. It's a difficult climate in which we're existing in. People will target you for whatever reason they feel if an outcome to a game isn't what they want. Before they do it, they've got to understand there is going to be a lot of media scrutiny straight away. What if the manager doesn't pick me? Your own dressing room, how would they react? Social media. I think that's a, a big issue. The opposition crowd would find it an easy target. So are you ready for that? Do you think the Premier League is ready for a gay or bisexual player? I am a openly gay football player, the highest playing player in the UK at the moment. And given that I am far from Cristiano Ronaldo, that is half of the problem, really. Awesome. The player manager has been leading by example at the back today. I mean, it'd be interesting if you've had somebody say that they don't believe that there's somebody that's gay at elite level. I'd love a conversation with them because I think they're insane. There are 100% gay men in elite football in this country without a shadow of a doubt. They just don't feel comfortable yet to be themselves. I've been a manager in every level of English football, from the second division up to the Premier League. I think the problem that you've got is anybody who ever has come out or tried to, it's all gone pear-shaped. It's, it's all gone wrong. You know, suicide, unfortunately. Um, with Justin Fashion, it was absolutely heartbreaking, you know, but it, it hasn't gone well. Ryan Fashion, oh! oh! My name's Amal Fashionu. Justin Fashionu was my uncle, and he was the first openly gay professional footballer. This was the first one million pound black footballer, significant player. He earned a transfer to European Cup winners. Nottingham Forest had won it the season previously. And then it began to unravel because he found himself in a, an uncomfortable environment without the support of his manager, Brian Clough, and the sort of revelation that he'd signed a player who was actually gay was something that Brian Clough just could not come to terms with and couldn't handle. Homophobia, mental health, and racism in football. Justin was going through a lot. He passed away, unfortunately, when I was 10 years old. It marked my life more than I kind of imagined. Since Justin Fashionu came out 30 years ago, not a single player from the professional men's game has come out while still actively playing. He started to set us on a path to do better, to be better. And I think now, if you look at the opportunity for the person that goes next, they have the opportunity to, in a much more accepting, much more open generation, culture, environment, to pick up that mantle and run with it. Now, I believe we're in a much better place, but it's nowhere near as good as where I want it to be. I think the fear of coming out at any level is bigger than the reality. It's a daunting task for somebody. It's just amplified at the elite level of football in this country. I think if a player came to me and said that they wanted to come out, we'd create a roadmap. I'm Georgie Hodge, and I'm a football agent working with some of the biggest footballers in the women's game. You know, in your subconscious, you, you kind of you do things in stages, really. You'd want to tell the club, make sure everything's aligned with them, make sure you're creating an environment that feels safe and comfortable for the player. That will be informing staff, teammates. So important to have the, the support of their club and teammates. I think without that, I don't, I don't think a player would feel comfortable in even coming out in the first place. I'm Patrick Bamford, Leeds United's number nine in the Premier League. I'd imagine if someone came out as gay, a player would go to the captain and probably confide in the captain, and then the captain would bring the group together. And you'd have a just a players-only meeting, and everyone would kind of be told the news. And to be honest, I know in our change room, I don't think there would be like too much of a reaction. Like everyone would just be like, okay, like, it shouldn't be that big a deal in this day and age. Hi, I'm Julian Lescott, ex-professional Premier League and England international footballer. I think in years and generations past, it would have been an uncomfortable or a more uncomfortable scenario or situation for 
a layer to come out. Growing up, there was a lot more gay jokes and, and stuff, and it was deemed more negative, if we're viewed in a more negative light. You can never say never, because you just don't know. But I think the perception of gay males has changed. I honestly believe the dressing room would be where they would receive most support. Now, I'd like to say players are, are more mature. I'd let them know, look, if you ever have any like worries or issues, or need to talk to someone, then you, but I can, I'm here to talk to you. Like, don't think just because you've come out that anything's going to change. Like, if we're still mates and stuff, like, nothing should change. I think that would be the kind of perception everyone would give off. So the captains, the more experienced players, especially if it was a young lad, and I think that everyone would just stand by him and be there for him. My name's Luke Tufts. I'm the first team manager of Ashford Town Football Club. I've got experience what it's like to be an out gay male in, in, in the men's football game. Probably the best way to come out, if that's something that you want to do, would be just speak to your manager and tell them, this is what I'm thinking of doing. I think this will really benefit my life. The manager has a massive, massive influence on the dressing room. The manager makes that dressing room. Well, first off, I'd be very proud of if one of my players came to me and said that, it means that the trust that I want to build is, is there. I would talk to them before anyone else first about what are they gaining from it, what are, what are the pluses, why do you believe you need to do that. I would encourage them to be their authentic self and make sure that they're happy on and off the field. You know, I, I would support them through whichever way. I wouldn't guide them one way or the other. It's about them, but I'd feel very proud that they want to share that with me. In my experience with this myself, you'll get met with nothing but love and support from everyone around you. And I, I'd be very surprised if, if you had anything negative from it. But what will happen straight away is you'll have the biggest weight off your shoulders. You'll just be free. You won't have to worry about a slip of the tongue. You won't have to worry about lying, about having a girlfriend anymore or, or making stuff up. I think your performances will get better. I think your life will get better. And I think you'll just be a happier person for it. I, I know. I've tried to help an environment in, in the clubs that I was at to be inclusive, to, to be, have empathy with everyone and make them feel safe. If you haven't got that, how can you be a good team? It would be new ground, you know? You have a meeting, you talk about it, he would have to say, this is it, they've got something to tell you chaps, and how do you feel? Boom, right, let's go. It might be a huge feeling for him. It feel like the world's on his shoulders, but it wouldn't take five minutes. And I think it'd be a total relief at the end of that. Anybody in the group who was negative towards it, I would get rid of without a shadow of a doubt, because they're not a human being who I would want to put my name to. It's such a wonderful kaleidoscope of things that you're looking for as a manager to try and build with a group of people to make them all feel as one. Different personalities, different the way they the way they think. You've got to try and make them all face the same way and try and pull in the same direction. I look for four or five out of the 25 to be the ones that do the talking. Some of them are followers, you know, and you've got to try and sort that out. That comes with experience. The changing room is, is a unique environment. Every single football club has so many different personalities. You have generals, colonels, and then you have the rest of the team. And those dominant roles play a massive part in setting the tone for that dressing room. If people are getting picked on a little bit by somebody, if it goes too far, it's your responsibility to pull up that person. So when it comes to sexuality, they are the people that are going to make a massive difference in whether you're going to, if somebody's going to feel accepted if they do reveal their sexuality. Ruthless. The, the, the banter in the dressing room is absolutely ruthless. Banter in the dressing room makes it the most fun, vibrant environment. And as long as it's from a good place, then it's actually really beneficial. That togetherness that it brings, a together dressing room is worth around 10 points. And it makes people want to come. It makes people win, draw or lose, you, you're going to go again together in the next game. And that, that's really, really important. You're always going to have banter and laughs and jokes in the changing room about certain things. But there has to be a line drawn in certain points. And I think the line can be pushed a little bit further if it's your best mate and you're really tight with him and you're close and you know that everything is kind of lighthearted. And even still there, there is a certain line that you don't step over in whatever circumstance. But it's one of them things where maybe people just have to 
take a second before they say something and just double think, am I going to really offend this person? If the person that you're bantering with gets hurt about it, that's turned immediately to bullying. And that has to stop. I've had that before. The players who were given the banter out, I said, you're a bully. Because you didn't take into consideration his feeling. And you've got to be aware of those feelings. He might not be able to express it in his voice, but his body language was obvious. He was getting hurt by it, so you're a bully. So I took the captaincy off him. You know, at the end of the day, that's what being a manager is about. You've got to try and manage your players and understand them and, and let them know what's acceptable and what isn't. I do think there will be challenges as well, and I think they'll mainly circle around religion. Sometimes within religions, obviously, they're not open to the LGBT community. But those are challenges that we're taking on as a society, so why should football be any different in terms of taking those on and having those conversations? I think every football club would embrace that person. I don't think it would look right if they didn't. Um, would that have happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago? I don't think so. So, you know, we, we have improved, but we don't do enough. Football clubs need to do more. At the end of the day, we, we are in a results-driven business, and anything that might hinder a player's performance is going to be, you know, is going to be something of concern to the coaches. If one of our players wanted to be more open about their sexuality, the first thing we would say is that, you know, we will provide whatever support they felt they needed. You know, we are very lucky at this club that we've got a, a player welfare team that, that looks after a whole range of different things for the players on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got highly educated coaches who have been educated in terms of welfare issues and psychological issues that go into being a professional athlete. It's really important that the athletes who are really required ultimately to deliver that performance are as in the best possible uh, position they, they can be. Across football, you know, there may be differences. There may be, you know, clubs that are less accepting at the moment or less educated at the moment. But I'd like to think we've come a very, very long way in the last 10 years in particular uh, to, to be where we would like to be. Inevitably, there's going to be more work to be done. Some football clubs are doing a much better job than others in terms of creating those environments. So actually, in terms of the level of football that we have in this country, it can absolutely be much better by people feeling like they can be their authentic best selves to perform at the highest level possible. My name is Ryan Atkin, and uh, I'm the first openly gay male referee in professional football. As a referee, we, we, we get our fair share of abuse. Whether it be on the field at the time when we make a decision, or it could be during in the broadsheets, or it could be on social media, coming out as an openly gay man, did slightly put a target on my back, or maybe subconsciously I thought he was going to put a target on my back because it's another element that somebody can use against me. Every club has got a responsibility to make their club diverse. And actually what it needs then is the key figures like your chairmen of your clubs, your secretaries. It needs, you know, your executive board of the Premier League to really get on board and really start to drive change and actually have tangible objectives. And the results are not about, we've had a player come out, tick the box, we're done. It's actually about stepping further back and saying actually how welcoming, how diverse, how open is our club, football, the league that we operate in. And once you start weaving in diversity into all the decision-making processes, you'll naturally find that you'll make football a lot more inclusive and more welcoming. I think it's going to take a special person to come out at the elite level. There are certain factors that are more applicable to, to a higher level professional player, Premier League player, a championship level player. You've got to think about media, you've got to think about sponsorships and your income and your agents, etc. You've got to think about stadiums full of 30, 40, 50,000 people. I think the process then for somebody thinking about coming out is why would I add another thing that could be used against me? I'm all for individuals doing what is, is good for them. But is it unfair for us to ask them to come out knowing there's a potential negative reaction to it coming at any given time. Yeah, we'd like it to be possible, but we know what comes with that isn't going to be comfortable for them. We don't have to live with the reaction.